In this video, we're going to discuss the steps to completing and submitting the VISR and common best practices. Please note, the purpose of this video is to provide a high-level overview of the VISR. Oftentimes, there are reporting requirements that vary by program. The program check icon will appear when these programmatic differences exist. For more information about your program requirements, please refer to your program guidance notice a funding opportunity, award package, or contact your program officer. To get yourself organized, it is recommended that you complete some suggested pre-work tasks before getting started. This may include determining the answers to the following questions. Are you entering a new project or updating an existing project? Are you submitting the BISSER for your organization or on behalf of a tribe? Which projects are being submitted? Additionally, please ensure you have access to the following information. Funding amounts for each project. Project subcategories and disciplines. Management and administration. What is obligated versus expended? Helpful tip, make use of Microsoft Excel to capture and organize the information. As discussed in the first video, the BISSER timeline includes the following steps. Next, we're going to go through the data entry and submission process. The BISSER entry and submission process includes the following steps. Data entry and submission. Log in to GRT website. Check update the user's organization module. Complete the following module for each year. This includes award tab, project tab, project funding tab, project details tab. Allocations tab, review the four self-checks areas, submit your projects, notify your program officer. To kick off the process, the awarding agency will send out a notice when the VISR is open for recipients to enter their project information into the GRT. Notices are published through FEMA Grants News. The notice will typically include the following information. Grant year, deadline, and reporting requirements. If you are not already subscribed to FEMA Grants News, you can subscribe here at FEMA-Grants dash news at fema.dhs.gov. After logging into the GRT platform, users will see the following user layout. Note, this screen may vary based on account type. On this screen, there are tabs located down the left side and across the top of the screen. Users will progress through the tabs across the top of the screen to enter a report into the GRT system. There will be a lot of preparation work and data entry required for the first VISR submission after an award. Subsequent submissions will carry forward data entered into the previous submission, thus eliminating the need for re-entry of information in the future. Note, as discussed earlier, it is important to do the pre-work beforehand for a streamlined process. To begin entering in the project information, click on the funding module on the left-hand side. Program check. Remember to review your program guidance or check with your preparedness program officer for program-specific requirements. Starting with the recipients tab, the designated local or SAA user 
We'll select the reporting period from the drop down list box and click on the newly created or existing grantee or subgrantee name from the list. Next, click on War tab, which is where users will update the obligated amount field. The Award tab shows the grant programs that are available for the grant award year, the amount of award funding received, the obligated amount, which refers to the amount legally designated to be expended for a particular purpose. However, funds have not yet exchanged hands from recipient to the supplier or vendor. This is the information that will be updated and the expended amount, which is the amount that has been spent, will auto-populate based on the total expended amount of each project. The Project tab allows users to enter or edit project information. In addition, this tab displays information about the status of the self-checks. This informs users whether there is an error in any of the fields. To update or edit an existing project, Simply click on the project title. The project view dropdown contains options to create a new project, display the project list, or display the project history. From here, users will enter in a descriptive project title that reflects the nature of the work. Project type, project location zip code, and funding type. In the next section, complete the project description field. The project description field allows the user to enter a statement up to a maximum of 4,000 characters describing the details surrounding the project. The project descriptions should be concise and address the following. Who is the project for? What is the project doing? Where is the project being performed? When will the project start and end? Why is the project necessary? Let's take a look at a few examples of common errors in project descriptions and how to resolve them. Take a look at example number one on screen. This is insufficient. Project title isn't clear, and the project description does not address the five questions. Who, what, when, where, and why. Now let's look at another example. The project title is clear, concise, and descriptive. The project description answers the five questions. Who, what, when, where, and why. Specific requirements for the project description can be found in each grant's notice of funding opportunity. Program check. In some cases, project descriptions have already been approved, while in other cases, they are being created for the first time. Please refer to your program guidance or program officer if this is your first time creating a project description. In addition to project descriptions, BISR users are required to enter all project milestones in the first BISR of each fiscal year. Milestones in conjunction with project descriptions are used to determine effectiveness of a project as well as how much of the project has been completed. Program check. A minimum number of milestones may be required. You should check your program guidance, NOFO, or with your preparedness slash program to confirm. Each milestone should include anticipated dates for each milestone, milestones that cover the lifespan of the project and show project progress. Now that the project descriptions 
and milestones have been entered, click on Create Project to continue. The Project Funding tab allows users to allocate grant funding for the projects they have created. It is important to note that the total grant awarded amount must equal the total grant funded amount. The individual project funding allocations cannot exceed the total award funding, nor can project funding allocations fall short of total award funding. Users will not be able to submit projects that contain these errors. Please make sure the allocated amounts are equal to the funding amounts approved by FEMA. Projects Detail tab allows users to choose a submission type, state or urban area submission, and the investment that is being supported. Once an investment has been selected, the page automatically refreshes to show the user's selected core capabilities. All grant programs are aligned to at least one core capability. Program Check State Homeland Security Program, SHSP, and Urban Areas Security Initiative, UASI, only use investment justifications, otherwise known as IJs. In the Allocations tab, users assign project funding to at least one of the six solution areas, subcategories, and disciplines. Refer to the GRT User Guide to see a list of solution areas, subcategories, and disciplines. Program Check Check with your FEMA Preparedness or Program Officer to confirm the appropriate use requirements for solution areas, subcategories, and disciplines. The self-check area consists of four areas. The following items need to be checked before submitting the BISSER. These areas include Project List View Grant Program View Solution Area View Project Validation View Helpful tip! Errors are often interconnected. The majority of errors can be troubleshooted by retracing your steps. Prior to making any corrections, consult your FEMA preparedness or program officer. Some common reasons why errors may occur include total solution areas, subcategories, disciplines does not equal the project total, total project funding does not equal total award amount, Using the non-designated management and administration subcategories, NSGP slash OPSG, it will throw off the M&A self-check. Once all of the self-checks are green, Click on the checkboxes of the appropriate projects that will be submitted. Click the Submit button. After you have submitted your BISSER report, please contact your FEMA Preparedness or Program Officer to inform them that the report has been submitted. When the report submission has been approved, the GRT system will automatically send an approval email. Program Check Tribes and SAA who submit the BISSER on behalf of the tribe have a different submittal process. Refer to BISSER submission process for tribes handout to learn more about the process. Once the local users submit the BISSER, the status of all projects will be updated from data entry in progress to submitted. The submitted project will then go to the designated SAA 
slash DTG admin for review and approval. After the SAA slash DTG admin has submitted the BISSER, it will be sent to FEMA and they will begin their review process. Users will repeat this process on a biannual basis throughout the period of performance. Helpful tip. As a reminder, to ensure successful future submissions of BISSERS, make sure to create a guide or best practices for your own internal references. In the final video, we will discuss the final closeout BISSER that is required after a project ends.